Good morning and welcome. This Sunday is Christ the King Sunday. This marks the last Sunday of our liturgical year. And next Sunday, we move into Advent, looking towards Christmas and New Year's. Now, before our service begins, just a few announcements. In-person worship services have resumed and it's been like this for a long time. If you want to join us, please do come. You have to show us proof of vaccination going forward uh, as we come together and gather for worship. Um, that Bible study happens every Thursday at 2 o'clock. And if you would like to have someone's name read throughout Advent, we have an Advent icicle ministry. So throughout Advent, we remember uh, certain people that you would like remembered, and we hang an icicle in their memory on our Christmas tree. It's beautiful because their memory and their name brings beauty to our uh, decorations here. It's also a way for us to remember those that are close to our hearts. So if that's something you'd like to do, you can get in touch with Margaret or Reverend John Morrison, and they'll give you a form for you to um, give, uh, for you to write the names on and give back. And they will, the names will be read out every single week through Advent. Our service is about to begin. So would you take a moment to calm your hearts and your minds? Invite the Holy Spirit into your home, into this space, and say this with me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Would you join me in confessing our sins against God and our neighbor? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship.
to join me in saying the Jubilate. If you have a Bible, turn to Psalm 100. That is what we'll be saying together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are the people of and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. At this time we're going to enter into a part of our service where we reflect on the word of God. So you'll hear a preamble, then the gospel and the sermon will continue. And welcome. This is the part of the service where we reflect on the Word of God and we learn what it means to apply it to our own lives. Now we're going through a series called It's the End of the World as We Know It, but I'm fine because, and there's a, a blank that follows every week. So this morning, on Christ the King Sunday, 
My sermon title is, It's the end of the world as we know it, but I'm fine because Jesus is King. It is Christ the King Sunday. And you're going to hear Jesus talk about his kingdom and his kingship with Pilate in, um, in the gospel. And it's a fascinating feast day, right? A feast day is a special day to remember something special about the church. So today in my sermon, I'm going to do a few things. One, I'm going to give you a bit of church history. Why is Christ the King Sunday so important? How did it come about? And then I'm going to tell you the kind of king Jesus is and why he's worth following. So my preamble before we hear the gospel will be about the history and my post-gospel will be all about why Jesus is worth following, what kind of a king he is. So the title, Christ the King Sunday, was created in 1925 by Pope Pius XI and entered um, other Protestant churches in the 70s, 60s and 70s when people began to use the lectionary as well. So why did Pope Pius XI create this Sunday? Well, quite simply, because the church needed the image of Christ as king in that moment. In 1925, Mussolini had been the leader of Italy for three years. A troublemaker in Germany named Hitler had been out of jail for a year. Hitler's Nazi party was growing in popularity and the world lay in a great depression. A depression that would become worse over the next 15 years. In that time, and as you all know, because many of your parents or grandparents grew up within this culture, the Great Depression, at that time it was filled with, the culture was filled with pr greed, pride, selfishness, and, and a lot of fear. And people just did not feel like they were in control. The world as they knew it was coming to an end. And it's not so different today with the pandemic, is it? In such a time, Pope Pius XI asserted that above all these new dictators, above these false values that they bring into this world, Christ is king of the universe. His values is what it meant to lead and be king. He is a true ruler, not Mussolini, not Hitler. Hitler and his ideas did not have authority. Mussolini was not the man. Money, power, and fear did not have control over our lives. It is Jesus alone who is sovereign. It is Jesus who has ultimate control. It is Jesus who is king. And it is Jesus to whom we pledge our ultimate allegiance. And it is by his values, his laws, and his rule that we live. And it's precisely about this Jesus who's king that we'll be reflecting on this morning. And it is the end of the world as we know it, but I am fine and we are fine because Jesus is king. Let's hear our gospel for this morning. Our gospel this morning comes from John chapter 18, verse 33 to 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So Pilate asked, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. So what kind of a king is Jesus portrayed to be in our Gospel this morning? Well, one, he is the truthful king. 
Two, he is the peaceful, uh, he is the messy king. And three, he is the servant king. The truthful king, the messy king, the servant king. And these will be the points of my sermon this morning also. So let's begin with the truthful king. We're living in a world of conspiracy theories right now, aren't we? Like, in fact, there's a Netflix show called The Inside Job. It's an adult cartoon about what the world would look like if all the conspiracy theories were true. Uh, it's, an, it's an absolutely ridiculous TV show. You, you shouldn't watch it. <laughs> uh, anyway, in the past few years, there have been so many conspiracy theories. QAnon, uh, microchips in vaccine, uh, f- flat earth, so and on and on and on. And not only that, what kind of hastened this, uh, this conspiracy kind of culture during COVID was that many world leaders undermined the pandemic. They're just, what, cre- what happened in the last few years was this air of skepticism about what truth is. In fact, anonymous bad actors pretended to be doctors and scientists on video and offered up junk advice, which went viral and so many people died because of these lies. And so many powerful people profited because of this untruth. Similarly, when Jesus walked the earth, when Jesus was led to the crucifixion, powerful leaders offered comforting lies to the masses to propagate their political agenda. The scribes and the Pharisees, in fact, had people give false testimony against Jesus. It was a world of conspiracies. It's a world filled with lies. And the powerful profited because of these lies. You see, truth threatens the powerful because the powerful live on fear. False accusations were made against Jesus. Unfair trials were held. Truth was lacking. And so Jesus looks at Pilate, who knows, right? He's there because, well, they're falsely accusing him. And he says, I came into this world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Jesus, the King, speaks truth into a world of lies. False kings are threatened by truth. Because truth demands two things. One, truth demands that one see the world for as world as it is. And two, truth demands change. For example, climate change. If we were to truly see the world as it is, it's flooding in Asia. It is plus 15 in the middle of November here in the north in Canada. Hold up. We got to really change how we live if the climate crisis, if global warming is true. But we got to see the world for what it is. Jesus sees the world for what it is. And he gives his church the eyes to see the world for the truth and for what it is. Broken, hurting people in need of rescue. People desperate for love. The leaders and the powerful craving, greedy for money and power. It's not a rosy world. And truth demands that we take off our rosy glasses, our rose-colored glasses, In order for things to get better, we have to accept that things aren't good. It's time for a change. And this is a challenge of following the truthful king. Are we willing to change? Are we willing to see the world for what it is? It's a mess. And sort of pointing out the truth is threatening for so many people. But Jesus speaks truth, which leads me to my second point. Jesus is a messy king. He gets his hands dirty. I want to tell you a story. It's about one of uh, my biggest mistakes. 
uh, growing up. I was in grade 10, and my friend asked if I could drive stick shift his car. And I'm like, of course. So I got in the back of the car, we went for a ride. And at one point, I went over some sand, like a pile of sand near someone's house that was used for construction. And I lost control of the car. And I crashed between two trees, almost running over a father and son. There's more to the story, but I want to tell you what happened when the mob gathered around the car. I made sure that the people in the car were taken to the hospital. I made sure everybody around was okay, but then I had to run to my parents because I was afraid. I didn't know what to do now. I made a terrible mess of the situation. I was 16 or 15. You see, I was sure that my parents were going to, I don't know, I, I, I was afraid what my parents should punish me. And I was so afraid of what they were going to say, what they were going to do to me. So I remember coming home to my mom and dad and, and then telling them what happened. And they said, are you okay? Good. We'll be back. My mom went to the mob, to the families at the scene of the accident. And she took upon herself the mess that I made. I don't know what she did that evening because I was at home. But when she came home, she held me and she said, it's okay, we will figure this out. I wasn't blamed, I wasn't punished. I think they knew, uh, I, had, I think they knew. You know, um, and she, for me, that story is how I think of Jesus, our Lord and King, how he deals with our mess that we've created in this world, because it's a messy, broken world. And the Bible says this, I'm going to mash two Bible verses together. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son in the form of a slave, Philippians chapter 2, to dwell among us. He is God with us. He enters into our reality and takes our mess onto himself. On that cross, he takes that mess. Our punishment, the anger was born on him. His atoning sacrifice was for us. He gets his hands dirty. He teaches us the true way of love. Jesus provides us with an image of royalty totally different from the world's image of royalty. Because the world's image of royalty is clean, pristine, does not get their hands dirty. But here we have a king who gets down with us, who gets into the mess with us, and he says, I love you. I'll take care of this. We'll get through this together. We have a messy king. And finally, three, Jesus is the servant king. When we look at Jesus, we notice that there is a total reversal of roles, right? The, the, the God King doesn't come in royalty, but in service. He refuses to be the controlling master of the world or the mighty monarch. Rather, he is the king who dies for others. And kings don't die for their subjects. But he, Jesus, will be crucified. He'll be a crucified king. He'll be a king who's ridic rid rid ridiculed mocked, scorned. He's a king who reigns on the cross, a thorn for his crown. He was, as the Bible says, pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. In every story of a monarch you'll ever read, they would rather give their kingdom, have people die for them, give up their subjects before they lose their position, privilege, or power. However, here, the servant king fights for us, dies for us, lays down his life for us. This is the kind of king Jesus is, a king who serves his subjects. I don't know about you, but this is the kind of king that I want to follow. This is the kind of king that I want to be subject to. 
This is the kind of king who I know that even when the world is crumbling down, it's going to be fine. Because he is a king who speaks truth, who gets into the nitty-gritty messes with me, who loves me, and he's a king who serves. He's a king that I can trust. You see, it might be like the end of the world as we know it, but I'm fine. We're fine. Because Jesus is king. He is sovereign. And he's got this. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the kind of king you are. We thank you that you are so good. We pray that you enable us to follow you through thick and thin. Sometimes we doubt, sometimes we falter, but Lord, you are good. You are king. Thank you that you are with us. Even when it feels like it's the end of the world, Lord, we know you speak truth. You get messy with us. And you have us at the center of your heart. Thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Our service continues with the affirmation of our faith. Let us together confess the faith of our baptism as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoin me in praying for our churches and our communities. For each petition, the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you know our hearts. You know what is good, and we seek at this day to have you reign in our hearts and minds. Lord, make your home tabernacle in us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the king of this universe. When things are out of control, out of our hands, remind us that you have got us, that you reign sovereign. Lord, hear our prayer our prayer. Lord, you are a king who gets down into the mess with us, and thereby assuming us, our human nature, you have reconciled us back to God, and we are so thankful for you. Lord, help us live in humility and awe of what you have done. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are a king that speaks truth. We pray that you would speak truth into our hearts, that we would see the world for, for as it is, and that we do something about it. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you came to serve. Help us also be servants of others, giving glory to your name for the way we act and live in this world. Lord, Hear our prayers. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King, grant the people of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, gathering all our prayers into one, would you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
May the blessing of God the Father, the King of the universe, reign in your hearts. May the blessing of God the Son, who reigns from the cross, who speaks truth into your life, who gets in the messiness with you and calms your storms, continue to be with you and bless you. And may the blessing of the Holy Spirit, who sustains you in this life, who gives you God's own eyes, continue to reign sovereign in your life. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you soon.